But when it comes to people kind of getting consumed and moved by the content or the viewership, I feel like that's kind of what happened to Sneeko, leading to him like getting banned off of YouTube now. Well, refresh, well, let me know, because I don't know why the f got banned. I don't know exactly why he got banned. It just happened today. Right. But he had two strikes right. on one channel. And then, oh. like, I think he took down a bunch of videos. Yeah. And then today, he just posts on Instagram his main channel and his second channel just terminated. Well, Brandon Buckingham is claiming the body. Yeah, but I think that's just a, a coincidence. <laughs> he put out a big video about him. I and then saw it. he showed that Sneeko maybe i don't know maybe it's because they deleted the channel that it says this but he showed like a social blade screenshot that made it look like he deleted like seven million views worth of videos which was probably a fuckload of his more popular videos so maybe he was trying to do that in the lead up to getting deleted i don't know but i mean i do think like bro in this this modern landscape it's like they're setting up rumble or whoever becomes like the alternate video provider like that opportunity is wide open for somebody right now and i think when you've sneeko and andrew tate and donald trump and alex jones and all these fucking people louis farrakhan like there's a lot of fucking people who are banned from social media it's like it's only a matter of time until one of these platforms really has like a th like i heard rumble is actually pretty popular to a degree I, I know andrew tate gets a lot of views on there but the thing is with sneeko I'm not sure that he has the fan base right. that would follow him there. I think he had it before this blow up. But I could see it becoming normal in a year or two for there to be enough canceled creators that people want to hear from that all of a sudden, even for somebody like me, maybe it makes sense to log into Rumble once or twice a day to look at the content from all these guys. And for me, it's like I'm not a hardcore Andrew Tate or Sneeko fan, right? Like, I'm not yeah. watching their fucking content on a, on a consistent basis. But if I was that guy, you know, let's say you, academics, Joe Budden, and fucking, I don't know, uh, wh whoever else, Sam Sam Harris. Harris. All, th say they all, yeah, they all get deleted off YouTube, and they all have to go to Rumble. Well, all of a sudden, I'm looking like a Rumble viewer, right? I mean, I, I feel like it's starting, like, for a lot of conservative people and right-leaning people, it's it's already there, pretty much. The, That's why I think it's so important that Rumble is potentially, I don't know if it's a thing yet, getting Steve will do it. Because you yeah. need to diversify the content. Right. You don't want to be known as, oh, yeah, yeah. this is the right-leaning platform. And that may not be the intention of the platform, right. but everyone that ended up getting banned just so happened to be in this bucket, yeah. and they moved here. Because so, immediately, then, your image starts to be, oh, that's... That's the platform where white supremacists feel like they can get away with shit that they wouldn't get away with on other platforms. Like the the day you start your platform that is like, we're going to be a free speech platform. I mean, that's immediately that's what's going to turn into is yeah. like, okay, we're going to be talking about how the, the Holocaust did not happen. Let's yeah, go. That's pretty much it. Yeah. And, or like you get a bunch of anti Semitism that comes in there, a bunch of all of these different groups that. Even the people that some people that got banned, they're like, yo, we're not we're not these guys. So I think there needs to be diversity. And that's why I think YouTube really messed up by banning mm -hmm. Steve Will Do It, because that was a ridiculous ban. Yeah. Like, nobody was like, yeah, great. That guy got banned. Right. It's just what for some gambling thing that was an accident yeah. that wasn't even intentional. Yeah, I mean, a lot of these dudes like fucking speed and destiny and all these fucking people are banned off twitch and so they go to youtube and then realistically like how long are they gonna last on youtube before they're off that and you know maybe facebook doesn't work out and uh you're like quickly creating a landscape in which you know if if destiny has to go to rumble i guess i'm going to rumble sometimes you know yeah. do you think there's more of a demand for the type of content that isn't very very I would say like lukewarm, for instance, Destiny, Speed, uh, let's say just Andrew Tate, Steve yeah. Go. Like there's been a huge demand and people are trying to portray it as, oh, these people are influencing people to like them. But I think people have just been searching for something like that. Right. And there's like this new younger generation that's like, yo, we're kind of like these edgy kids that like to crack jokes and talk shit on video right. games. This Speed guy's <laughs> just like us. We can watch him, and he's not censoring himself. Right. Yeah, I mean, and if you look at even just within hip-hop, it's like, who are the popular woke voice boxes in hip-hop? Charlemagne? Yeah, like, he's the closest thing that you're probably going to get to. And Charlemagne even, like, what what was the clickbait on the Logan Paul clip? He said that, like, every woke person needs to go take a nap or some shit. Like, I don't think Charlemagne, like, 
realizes that he's sort of uh, gone all in on the woke shit sometimes. And sometimes I feel like he has some regrets about maybe, you know, putting himself in that box, I think. Yeah. But when you look at all the, the important voice boxes in rap, I mean, you got Joe Budden's not exactly uh, PC, Ak, at all. me, Vlad. Like, these are not people who are, like, having these sort of, like, tame conversations where – where everything is geared back to the like default social justice warrior viewpoint. It's just not something that is going to work in hip hop. I can't think of anybody who is even close to like being like truly woke that it has a popular platform in rap music. Well, I think that's kind of a bind that the bigger platforms are in where culturally hip hop is not woke or soft or anything mm. like that. So if they kind of impose against that, they'll get a bunch of accusations of whether it be racism or trying to hold the culture back right. that they're like, Hey, we have to give more leeway to this genre of content and music as a whole. All right, people, we just hit 300,000 subscribers. You know, we're trying to hit 400,000 subscribers. So that little red button, tap it, tap in. Appreciate y'all.